Have you ever been frozen in time? Just like I was? <laughs> well, there's a term for that when it happens, at least in the programming world. And it's what's known as deadlock. I want to start talking about one of the other pitfalls, programming with concurrency, so you can know how to avoid it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our code so we can continue learning about concurrency. So we've learned about mutual exclusion and the ability to lock our code. And we used this previously to solve a problem where we wanted to create a critical section, that is to have a lock and unlock pair, make sure that only one thread at a time could access a particular shared value among multiple threads. Now, what would happen though, if I commented out this unlock? That is, a thread did not return the lock or tell the other threads that it was available so that other threads could acquire this lock here. Let's go ahead and try to recompile our program. This is thread example six, and see what happens. And just like I was frozen at the start of this video, you're gonna see that our program has frozen. And it makes sense because, well, if we take it to the whiteboard here, if I have some critical section here, and I'm just gonna label it critical section, that is a section of code protected by a lock, and I have a bunch of threads here, thread zero, thread one, thread two, etc. Trying to acquire this lock. Let's say thread one happens to get the lock this time. And then it leaves or goes out of scope, but it doesn't return this lock. And again, this is what we call dead lock. Lock is never returned. And a more formal definition of this is that none of our threads are able to make progress because they're blocked or not able to acquire a resource. Again, that's what we see in our example here. All of our threads are blocked here and never able to make any progress, acquire this block resource and do their work. Okay, so how can we fix this? Well, the issue is actually that it's, there are better primitives. And I want to show you other ways in which we can forget to retrieve a lock a little bit more subtly. So in our code, we can always make sure to lock and unlock in pairs like this, and we can sort of do a look or maybe build some static analysis tools, but things can be a little bit more subtle. So let me uh, modify this code a little bit, and I'm going to put things in a try uh, catch block. So I'll try to update our shared value here. And let's say that some programmer does this because, you know, it's a good idea to try here. And they have a try catch here. Standard C out, um, you know, handle exception. And, you know, then we just return here. And we throw our exception here, you know, dangerous, um, you know, abort, whatever, for whatever reason. Now, this is subtle in the sense that if I one, if I run it, my code will in fact compile. I can sort of do my visual test here and see that, okay, I'm locking and I'm unlocking. But if I run this again, you'll notice my program doesn't make any progress. Because the first thread that was able to acquire this lock updated the value, but then an exception was thrown. And when an exception is thrown, we don't unlock here. So how can we fix this? Well, we could make sure to put our uh, unlock here um, and make sure we copy and paste this here. Uh, but we also need to make sure that it's here. So our code starts to get a little bit convoluted here because we need to make sure that we are releasing our lock in the case that an exception was thrown. But again, there is a better tool for this that I want to introduce you to. So I'm going to take you over to CPP reference here. And if you scroll down to the bottom of mutex, you'll also see some other uh, related functions here. And I'm going to introduce you first to the lock guard here. And the lock guard, it states here, and I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see, is a mutex wrapper. That is, it can wrap the actual mutex, so it'll make sure that in the scope that it's in, when it's destroyed using RAII style principles, resource acquisition is initialization, that when the destructor for lock guard is called, any of the mutexes that are held, even if an exception is thrown, will be released. Okay, so let's go ahead and see this from an example, and this can be a way to improve your C++ code. 
Okay. So what I want to do here is instead of just calling my lock and unlock, what I'm going to do here is create lock guard. It's going to be holding a mutex. And when I create the lock guard, it's the mutex, the particular mutex that it's holding is G lock. Okay, that's our mutex up here. So we're creating this lock guard or instantiated or otherwise thinking about giving ownership of this lock, G lock. Okay, now what you'll notice is I'm going to get rid of my lock here. I'm going to get rid of my unlock here. I'm going to get rid of my unlock here. Because as soon as this lock goes out of scope here, which would be at line 19, it'll go away. In fact, I could probably do even a little bit better and put it within this try block, but this is okay here. Now I want to show you that if I run this program, even in the case of an exception, it will still execute all the threads. And since all my threads are just throwing an exception, uh, you'll see that they all execute and um, run the exception handling code. So let me go ahead and just clean up my uh, code here. Let's say we didn't do any of this uh, exception stuff. And I could also just simply keep my code like this. And let's see if we get our shared value as a thousand. And we do every time. So there's a few other types of uh, locks that may be also of interest here. And I may do future lessons on them if I can um, come up with the right uh, examples. Scope lock is the more preferred one with uh, C17 because I have multiple mutexes protected. But either way, what you'll want to start doing is using things like lock guard rather than having to remember to manually lock and unlock your locks because it makes sure that you handle the case where there's an exception and the sort of extraordinary case, and it just makes your code a little bit easier to get right. So I hope you learned about a useful tool here called LockGuard. And again, it enforces these principles of RAII that are so important to C++. It can make your programs a lot more elegant. And overall, now we're starting to write some correct concurrent programs where we have synchronization primitives like mutex, lock guard, and multiple threads executed. So pretty cool stuff. I hope you're enjoying it and we'll continue onwards.